to welcome the principal, students and teachers of Sir Robert Borden School, who was selected by an, uh, a, an award jury chaired by Carolyn Duhamel, the past president of CEA. This jury was made up exclusively of past presidents who amongst them covered the domains of policy, research and practice and they were unanimous in the selection of this school. Their uh, recognition of this school related to the criteria they'd established for this award, which were evidence-based criteria. They wanted to see evidence of the engagement of young people, of students in the work and life of the school. They wanted to see strategies that would apply to a whole school and not simply to a single program within a school. So it's with great pleasure that I introduce uh, Darlene Fitzgerald. It is with great excitement and honor that we are here today to accept the Ken Spencer Award for Innovation in Teaching and Learning on behalf of all of our students and staff of Sir Robert Borden. Before we begin, I would like to first of all thank CEA for honoring our students and staff by inviting them to take part in the ceremonies here this afternoon and also for allowing us to present our story as a team. Please meet our team. Sir Robert Borden uh, first began participating in What You Do in School Today in the fall of 2007. Too much stuff. With a focus on authentic student engagement and student voice, the survey and ideas of the product have really played a significant role in creating many positive changes for teaching and learning at our school. Like all data, the What You Do in School Today is what you make of it. To use it well requires some practice and patience, persistence, and to dig deeper and ask some thoughtful questions. So Robert Borden staff must be commended for their willingness to dive in some really challenging conversations about change, what it means to include students as partners in their learning, to change current practice, look at ways of improving school operations to benefit our students, and what the data is telling us about teaching and learning. Each year we gain more and more confidence in using the data from a lot of different sources. We are learning a lot from what students are telling us about their experience, and with them we've moved beyond issues of the school lunch period and its leaky roof to focusing on learning. By focusing on student engagement, and really paying attention to what students have to say, we have come much more comfortable in asking our students and ourselves questions. As a school, we are experiencing some significant changes. Relationship among staff and students are much more positive. We all share a responsibility for the setting expectations for a positive learning environment. And over the last two years, we have seen some dramatic declines in student office referrals, suspensions, and an increase in literacy achievement. Without going into a lot of detail, I'd like to uh, share some of this evidence of improvement with you for the next following slides. This is our uh, student office referral over two years. Student office referral again over two years, this time showing the end result. So in 2007, 2008, we had 608 office referrals compared to last year at 264. Student suspension data over three years. Our literacy assessment, what we call JLA, which is our junior high assessment done by the Department of Education. This shows the percentage of students meeting expectations in reading and writing compared to our board results. This is our favorite graph. It's from what you do in school today. Um, I could probably do two hours presentation on this graph alone, uh, but the significance here is snapshot one and snapshot two shows a 6% increase in uh, the flow of our students, which is in the top right. 
So what this provides our literacy team with in our school is it does give us a piece of evidence to say that we are indeed going in the right direction to make improvement in literacy for our students. What you do in school today is one of the many initiatives that are happening in our, in our school. But I think one of the biggest achievements has been the understanding between the very strong connections between student engagement and our efforts to improve student learning and current practice. But this took time. Matt Moriarty is a teacher and our school coordinator for What You Do in School Today. He describes our first experience with the survey like this. When we first ran the survey in the spring of 2008, the students had no experience in what they were looking for from them. The responses to various questions showed their lack of understanding of what exactly it could mean for them. It was a chance for them to have their voices heard, something that seems so elementary from a learning perspective. Ask those ones who learn how they learn best. As a school, we did our best to understand how to change our classroom practices and reflect the changing ways that students learn. As a coordinator, I had to find a way for the students to understand what great tool they had at their fingertips. Here are some samples of student open-ended responses from February 2008 to April 2009. And I'll just let you read those. And over time, they did start talking about their learning. Our first set of what you do in school today results were not very positive, and it was tempting for our staff to dismiss the student responses as a rant to a captive audience. But we kept the results on the agenda and eventually added topics like student office referrals, suspension, various student assessments, student support data, and student written responses to open-ended questions. Two questions help us use our data productively. What patterns are we seeing in the data? And what are some of the little things we can do to address the concerns of students? These questions ensured our staff that our focus was exactly where it needed to be, not on judging or evaluating individual teachers, but on what we may do as a team to set some new conditions for learning. Today, our students are a vital part of this decision making in our school. Last year, our student leadership team had 35 members who got involved in reviewing our survey data and providing input into what teachers and students can do to create change. They prepared and ran monthly assemblies to celebrate student success and talent. And they also had a say in the decision making that was involved in using their funds that they raised from different activities. And they were a voice for other students. All of this amounts to what and how I experienced what you do in school today as a principal of Sir Robert Borden. There's certainly a lot more to our story, our story and just more than my perspective. So I've asked uh, members of our student leadership team and our staff to share their experience and thoughts with you. Please welcome Shelby and Danielle. Hi, I'm Shelby McDougall. When teachers first told my grade eight class about the what did you do in school today survey, we thought it was funny. Students laughed and said, since when do teachers listen to us? We didn't think what we said on the survey was going to matter. This attitude resulted in poor responses on the survey. My peers and I did not know that as students, we can have a voice. And the survey was a great way to have our voices heard. As soon as the teachers and staff started to make changes in the school from results on the survey, we knew that our voices were being heard and that they did matter. 
This led to positive results on the next survey and more changes that could be made to improve the school. Then the teachers came to us to discuss the results. We finally felt like we could make a difference. Another way students made a difference was through the student leadership team. I was one of 35 members. Together, we represented the students. It took leadership skills and commitment to be a member of this team. Committed members not only changed our school, but they changed themselves. We learned school skills that could be used throughout our lives. I was never good at public speaking, but I became better as I spoke in school assemblies, and now here I am today. <laughs> school assemblies were an issue before the What Did You Do in School Today survey. Everyone I talked to said, that they did not like assemblies and all they did was chat with their friends the whole time. So the leadership team started running the assemblies to get students more engaged. We asked the question on the survey that said, what would make assemblies more interesting? With the feedback, the leadership team held monthly assemblies to help the teachers, to help monthly assemblies with the help of teachers in which students learned more and were more involved. I had students tell me that they loved assemblies. Each assembly led to more student engagement and school spirit. As a result of the What Did You Do in School Today survey, I feel confident, proud, and I feel like my voice has been heard. With this survey, more and more students can be heard too. It takes courage and commitment, but with the help of students and teachers, anyone can make a difference. Thank you. Hi, I'm Daniel Soulard, and I'm gonna be talking about student voice. So basically student voice is when students want to learn, yeah, when they want to learn and they want to be engaged. To be engaged means that students try hard to learn what they're offered in class. Student voice helps teachers and administrators understand that students have their own unique perspectives on learning and teaching and schooling and that their opinions should be heard and listened to. Through student voice, teachers and administrators learn about students' specific needs and ideas about what teachers can do to improve school and our learning. Students are more likely to care about their work and their projects when they like their school and their environment is basically a positive environment. Students are capable and willing to serve as partners in school improvement work by contributing useful ideas that teachers and administrators may and most likely will overlook. Student voice in a class classroom, such as suggesting themes and topics to study, and in school policies, makes it easier for students to be engaged and interested in what they're learning. Last year at Sarah Borden Junior High, we had a strong number of 35 students from all grades 7 to 9, who soon became known as our student leadership team. The leadership team develops learning activities that are meaningful to their students and that connect their lives and communities outside of school. The leadership team worked alongside teachers and administrators to decide which activities the student body should participate in, how best to spend the funds that we raised, and we've, basic, we've been a voice for students' concerns. This program gives students a say in what they learn and some responsibility for creating their own learning environments, which makes them more interested in what they learn. The student leadership team have they had a major impact on the schools because they're made of students who really want to learn and want to make a change. The student leadership team at Sarah Borden single-handedly developed our new nutrition break and our lunch times, as well as created a student-led rules and expectations for our student conduct. Schools with student voice have fewer discipline problems, more involvement, and higher student engagement, and higher achievement overall. Please welcome Tracy Mulder, African Nova Scotian support worker. Over the past several years, uh, Swabber Borden Junior High has been privileged to receive a grant from Nancy Sparks and the Race Relations Cross-Cultural Understanding and Human Rights Department of Halifax Regional School Board. Now, the grant is designed to provide students of African descent support in literacy and numeracy. Last year, Ms. Fitzgerald and I decided that we wanted to do something a little different rather than give students direct support. Uh, so we approached students and asked them how would, what activities relating to African culture they would like to have in their schools to assist them in their learning. We had awful lot of suggestions, but the one that sort of stood out for us was the suggestion that we get someone into the school that, that actually was from the community and was a writer. And that person that they wanted was Shantae Grant. As a result of after the, the writing workshop that we've done, we asked the students who participated to kind of share their thoughts and experience. And Shant 
Tiana had this to say. This was one of the grade eight students who participated in the writing project. I'm very happy to say that these students are indeed still writing in their journals. They are still de digging deeper and outside, writing poetry and other things. And teachers are also coming back and, and they're noticing this in their literacy classes. So that was a, an amazing project. Thanks for sharing that, Tracy. Miss Margaret Langley. If a fundamental piece of student engagement is about giving students an opportunity to be heard, uh, then writing workshop is a natural fit. As a teacher, I've known that giving students authentic opportunities to speak, write, and be heard is crucial. Last year was my first year teaching at Sir Robert Borden, and it was my first experience with the What You Do in School Today survey. What I found was that What You Do in School Today affected the school culture. Because kids were accustomed to being asked to think and talk about their learning and their needs, and because they had experience being heard, I found that my job was made a bit easier. I can't speak for the students, and as you are beginning to see, they're really good at doing that for themselves. But I do think that partly um, through the experience of what you do in school today, students believed that their opinions, experiences, and unique knowledge were valued. Uh, some of the barriers that can be in involved in a writing workshop were removed because of that. I don't have to tell you that intellectual engagement is both elusive yet critical component to student engagement. Um, when students are given opportunities to learn and ask questions about topics that are connected to their own lives, when they are given the time needed to explore those topics and problem solve through their writing, then they are much more likely to be both emotionally and cognitively invested in their writing and their learning. I had read Tom Romano's book, Blending Genre, Altering Style, a guide to writing multi-genre research papers the year before I started it at Borden, and I couldn't get it out of my head. I was struck by the notion of students taking up a theme or a topic, researching it, and then writing about it through multiple genres. As we know, a poem can say things that an essay never can, but an essay and a poem together can really come together in a really kind of special way. The idea behind multi-genre papers is that each piece of writing comes together to tell a story. So I wanted to try this type of long-term connected writing in my classroom. And because of the culture that I found when I, when I arrived at Borden, I decided to take a big risk and, and try it with my grade nine writers. For me, the risks involved in this kind of process were mainly around timing. I had to commit to letting go of about five months of planning. Um, I had to let it go to the students. Students were given an opportunity to identify areas of interest or questions that they wanted to find answers to. This is where the research started. After each student chose a topic, and that was a really difficult process in itself, they began to research. We spent a lot of time researching, and I began to worry that we were spending too much time researching. But when in a conference with students, I found that for the most part, they were really engaged in that, in that research process. So for the next three months or so, um, my reading and writing workshops revolved around where the writers were. One requirement was that each student had to write a persuasive essay, so planning for that was really straightforward. Um, but once the students started to find the path in their writing, uh, my planning had to get more targeted. Some students wanted to write book reviews, so that told me what to plan for the next mini lesson. I also found that um, it was possible to group students together based on where they were and provide explicit instruction to small groups of students while the other writers were working more independently on their work. The multi-genre project worked. Um, it took a long time, but that makes sense. Writing is a process and so is, so is discovery. Students wrote essays, poetry, nonfiction texts like book reviews and film reviews, recipes, feature articles, um, interviews. They wrote fiction texts like short stories and monologue. I can't begin to tell you how exciting it was to read those finished projects. One of the things we hear from students through What You Do in School Today is that they wish they could learn about topics of their own choosing. The multi-genre research project gave my grade nine students that opportunity. Um, and it also gave me an opportunity to try something that looked good on paper and now I know really does work. The next slide I'm going to ask you to read, um, I, I found it as I was going through them, but I wanted to save it until after uh, Margaret did her presentation. And it shows that students will certainly tell us when something's not working. But the beauty about what you do in school today, and once they start engaging, and we include them in the conversation, 
They will also tell us when it is working. This was an actual question, word for word. So thank you, Margaret. You did get it right for our students. The last presentation, singer, songwriter, and producer, Miss Whitney and Taylor Dugas. Please welcome. Last year in our grade eight English class, we were reading the novel, The Outsiders. And as a final assessment, we had to choose three out of nine assignments to complete and finish. And one that you could do was make a CD, so I decided to do that. But I did not have a mic or a CD maker, so I asked my friend Taylor to help me make that. Whitney wrote the lyrics to her rap synopsis. Every word and rhyme relates perfectly to the Outsiders book. I helped her pick out the instrumental, showed her how to use a mic, and when we were done, we put on a CD. It was very easy and fun to make, and it showed that I had a clear understanding of the book, The Outsiders. So I presented it to my class, and they really enjoyed it, so I hope you do as well. Thank you. Johnny and then Dally. He told me she's a strong, so I have to carry on. I could be dead and gone. We may have won the rumble, but that's just all mumble. Maybe. In closing, I'd like to thank Carol Olson for inspiring our vision and providing our school with the opportunity to participate in what you do in school today. Natalie Ludwig for her work and her, nominate, and her nominating our school for this award. Thank you, Natalie. To CEA for starting the conversation about student engagement and student learning and giving us the concept and ways of understanding the social, academic, and intellectual engagement so that we can begin taking action at the school and in our classrooms. And finally, to Ken Spencer for your contribution in recognizing the importance of student engagement and creating an award that celebrates our success and, can, and helps us continue exploring innovative ways so we can get it right for our students. Thank you. You know, you sit there in an office in uh, Toronto, wondering some days whether in fact the work you do makes any difference. And so it's kind of thrilling to be here with you. And it's a special treat this year because Dr. Ken Spencer is with us. And I would like to invite Ken to say a few words and to actually present you with the award. Thank you. I was going to say a, a couple of things, uh, which are somewhat contradictory, but that's OK. The first is the award isn't the important thing. The important thing is that you guys did this innovation, this project. You came together. You took some risks. And, and you did it. And you happen to be successful is good, but innovation isn't always successful. But the fact that you did it is the important thing. And the second thing, while the award is kind of important, because when you do something, you sort of feel you know, that it's good. But I won't go give you a lecture on innovation, but one of the steps is verification. And the fact that you, know, you won the, you know, a panel of judges, not including myself, from across Canada picked this project as the one that was most worthy of an award is a verification to you that you did something really special. And the second reason the, uh, the award's important is that you may, you may, by the publicity around the award, inspire some other schools to do some things. They don't have to do the same thing, but just the fact that you can change things in school and getting that word out is important. Where are the parents in all of this, and what has been their sort of reaction or response to what you've been doing? and? Uh, and uh, their level of buy-in, let's say. Going into grade seven, I was extremely scared to go to junior high, so I felt like I needed to be involved, almost. But my mom totally supports, and she loves it. And she loves hearing from the principals and teachers, and she just, she really, really enjoys all the, how I'm involved and stuff. When we did our uh, 
African Nova Scotian Literacy Connection Project. Um, we first asked students whether they wanted to be involved, and then we sent home permission slips. And there's a few students who decided they were opting out. Their parents called up and decided that no, they were not going to opt out, um, which we thought was great because of what we were trying to do. But parents opted them in, and I can tell you that they didn't regret the decision that their parents made either. But I know that at least whatever what I do in the schools, um, that parents are extremely supportive. They're always calling up, asking how, how their children can get involved in terms of what we do, what I do in the school, and what we all do in the school.